I'm hoping that you can hear me over the hum of the uh, reel-to-reel player. I will speak loudly, so hopefully you can hear it. Um, my mother had eight children and kept recordings of every kind. And I have a blog post about this on my blog, The Secret is Gratitude, where I show all of the different kinds of recordings that she used over the years. We've got reel-to-reel, mostly left, and um, cassette tape. This entire stack is not all of them, but uh, reel-to-reel, 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 uh, I think those two are, the bottom bin is cassette, reel-to-reel, uh, reel-to-reel, reel-to-reel, and most of them are the big ones. Those two are cassettes, and this one is papers. Oh, yay, more stuff to sort. Anyway. So I'm trying to transfer them over, and I wish I would have taken a video earlier. I was just so busy with my brother helping me that I didn't get to do that. So um, I wanted to show you. I purchased this for $20 at a secondhand store. When we first started transferring these over years ago, we had about three or four different players, and they didn't have the output jacks. And so I've kept my eye open at a secondhand stores for this, and I have a one that's better that doesn't have a hum on it, but that's downstairs where I'm actually doing the um, transferring them onto computer. This station up here, where I'm usually working in the house and things, is actually for just pre-listening because I don't want to record onto. I don't want to record at all if it's just music or a talk of somebody gave or something. I only want it if it's family history. So what I did is I found uh, years ago we had a really hard time. I'm going to turn this off for a second. We had a really hard time finding um, tape players that worked. So earlier today, I had six um, of cassette tape players lined up it, up here on this table. And um, we have one over here on this thing as well. And what we did is we hooked it up to a computer, an Audible file, and we recorded the same cassette on all of the tape players and then played them back to find out which one had the least amount of hum and which one played the, the smoothest and didn't catch or didn't click. And we chose two other ones that are downstairs and those are hooked up to individual laptops to record this stuff that we actually want to record. This station up here, like I said, I'm just, I put a tape on and listen to it and fast forward and whatever as I can. And then um, if it doesn't have anything on it that's family history, we throw it away. If it has something on it that somebody else may want, like a talk that some so-and-so gave, like one, one that I found was my uncle giving his valedictorian speech at his college law class uh, for his law degree. And so I, I gave that to him. Another one was my uncle, uh, cousin leaving on a mission as a missionary in his farewell 25, 30 years ago. So maybe 35 years ago, <laughs> thinking about it. So um, it's really great stuff that, that people want. It's just my mother was a, a family history hoarder, papers and um, tapes and things like that. So I'm showing you how to hook this up to the computer so you can do it, and then I'll show you an actual Part B downstairs. So I found another er, uh, more recent model than this that doesn't have the hum that you could hear. This one actually has tubes in it, and so it has to warm up. But the nice thing about this one is it has its own speakers here, and it can be stereo with the lid. So you plug in a auxiliary jack, and, and you can actually hear uh, in, in stereo while you play it. Uh, the other one is also a four track, but I don't think it has the tubes. It's a little bit more modern that way, but you, it doesn't have a speaker. I didn't get a lid with it. I bought it used and it didn't. But they both have the three different speeds. Now the thing that I found is part of the tape on one of the four tracks might be recorded in slow speed. One of them might be in fast speed. And they might be playing at the same time, and I will show you how that happens. So when you're playing it, if you hear a second little noise behind the first one, it's probably on stereo. So there's these little switches on the front of the other one and on the side of this one that say mono or stereo. And if it's on stereo, you're going to hear both sides. But if they, So you'll hear two tracks on each side at the same time. But you only want, if you're recording it, you only want to be able to listen to one. So you can plug the auxiliary plug in if it has these. If it doesn't, there's another little thing that you may have to do. But um, if it has the auxiliary you, uh, and, and the jack is just a regular auxiliary jack, which is nice, 
um, you can just plug it into channel one and then listen to channel one, up uh, uh, you know, just pay hit play, but you would need to put it on mono if you're only listening to one channel. If you want to hear channel two or, or the stereo, you can put it into that and just listen to channel two. But if you put it into channel one and you have it on stereo, you will hear both tracks at the same time. But this one's really nice because it has a microphone for both tracks and auxiliary line in um, and out. So it's really um, nice. Now, to record, you want to get, there's a couple of different softwares. Audible is nice because you can kind of see that it's recording. It gives you a little visual up and down. I don't have it hooked up here because I'm going to do that later. But, but you, what you want to do is you want to, and the same thing with the tape. So if you have a tape player and you want to record it, you take that auxiliary out, out jack. So you need a mail, two, uh, well, something with two mouths, and you plug it one into the stereo and the other one goes into the microphone jack or the the headphone jack if you don't have a microphone jack uh, so it goes in the headphone jack um... where's hers? Um, this isn't my computer, this is my daughter's so anyway, it goes into the microphone jack oh crap, sorry oh it's already in there, so right there anyway, so you put it out there and then in the, uh, the headphone jack and then you just click on the audible program you click record but what I'm showing you on this one is so you how to hook it up. So you want the auxiliary uh, out, and you want the or in. Sorry, the, the aux line. It could be here either. Um, this is the out, and this is the in. I'm guessing. And then, um, well, that would be the microphone. So some of them have the larger ones, and you can buy um, adapters from the small to the large if your machine is old enough that it only has the the larger jack holes for like the big old headphones that you would use you know you know when you were younger they most of them are are so this one is nice that it has the smaller ones okay so when you thread it you put the one that you want to listen to on the left and you just kind of drop it through there's no big excitement you can just pick it out like that and just drop it in and then you kind of loop it around once and then twist this and you can see it, it moves freely as long as it's not on and there's no gears on. Then the speeds are, if you can see, gosh, it's so bright, one and seven eighths, three and three quarters, or seven and a half, and that's slow play to fast play. There's a counter, so if you're going to record something and you're pre-listening to it, you can pre-listen to it and then uh, hit the counter or you can hit the counter when you start and then you could notice which number so so say you had zero when you started and it's at 135 is where you want to record the cute thing that you want on the tape so then you pay attention to that and then you can w then you can start uh, playing and, and hit play, uh, record on your computer device so um, some of them the other one that I have does not have a volume on the outside like I said the speakers are not attached. You have to ha use your own external speaker. Um, so I had to wire it through the back of the computer and then have a, a little auxiliary speakers that plugged in that we could listen to it um, after because uh, we wanted to hear how it played, you know, after. So um, then what you do is you turn it on and see you can you can see the volume for channel channel one and then channel two. So the, mi the middle one is channel one and the bottom one is channel two. And it will take a second to um, warm up because it has the, those, but I wanted to record without that loud sound. Then this one has just very clearly record channel one, record channel two. The other one does not. You have to flip the little switches on the top that says channel one or channel two to record or play. So you just have to get used to what yours is, but basically the, the way to record them onto a computer is the same for both uh, m methods or machines. I, there, we have an older machine. We had to kind of splice some things, but these these ones you didn't. So look for a machine at a secondhand store or online that has these options, so that you don't have to try and build a microphone to record it to your computer. So you to list to preview listen. I'm going to show you what I do to preview listen. I listened to both tracks on one side at the same time. So when they recorded this, they recorded it on track one and on track two separately. They didn't record with two microphones at the same time as you would with music, one on the microphone, one on the you know instrument or something like that. So most of these tapes, uh, the way that they are recorded, have 
only one channel. But I don't want to listen to both channels separately. I want to listen in high speed. So what I do is I put it onto stereo on both machines. I put it onto stereo, and then you can hear some. You can hear line one and line two. Normally that would be like the vocal and the the instrument. But because I don't want to have to listen to them twice, and I'm just previewing them, I listen to them in stereo, and I can hear both tracks. So when you listen to it, it's kind of weird because this one is both music. It's not both speaking. But if it was both speaking, you could hear two different voices or tones or people speaking at the same time, and then you would have to flip over from one to the other. Now, if you play it, I'm going to play it in a faster speed so you can hear what it sounds like when it's on a faster speed. Oh, I've got to turn it on. So if you have it on the wrong speed and you play it, let's turn them both up so you can hear. It's got to warm up for a second, so give it a second. Okay, so it was recorded at one and seven eighths, and I'm playing it and listening to it at three and three quarters, because I don't, I can tell there's no speaking, and I'm listening to two channels of music. I'm not going to record. So let me turn this down. I'm not going to record the music. I don't want that unless it's like my mother singing or a kids program that I was in or something. So I don't care. So I'm going to listen to it on high speed, or you can just stop and fast forward for a couple of minutes and then hit play and still hear if it's something you want. Stop, fast forward, play if it's something you want. And that way you can go through it in double speed or triple speed. If I can c hear that it's the same music, this is some opera my m mother recorded, and I don't really care. She's not in it. It's not a big deal. So I'm, I'm going to listen to it at high speed, get through it as fast as I can while I'm doing the dishes or loading, you know, folding laundry or something. And that way I don't have to listen to it on, for an hour. I can only listen to it for like maybe 20 minutes, and I can get through more tapes that way. But if you're going to change the speed, you need to hit stop and then change the speed so that it, it doesn't shift the... It's like eight tracks. So one track's here, two tracks here, three tracks here, four tracks here, and you just click to the different tracks. But this one has a manual thing that goes up to the different tracks, so you have to stop, change the gears to higher speed or lower speed, and the same with if you're changing it to... Uh, fast forward, rewind, whatever, just hit stop and then play or record or whatever. Um, so let's hear it in, in the super high speed. And I, So I could listen to it at that high speed and realize that it's still the same uh, or opera going on. But once it stopped, if I heard talking, uh, then I would slow it down and listen to it. So this is a way to high speed listen to your uh, audio fast so you don't have to listen at slow speed for and two, I can do two channels at the same time then once it's gone all the way through you take this one off you put it over here you flip it upside down you put it over here you wind it through and then you let it play on the uh, opposite side so that's why they say it's four tracks because you can play two tracks on either side so uh, this is kind of a good machine, but it has that hum. If you can hear, there's a hum in the background. The machine, the other machine that I'm using to record does not have that hum, and this hum transfers over into the recording. So you want to try and find the most quiet recorder that you can to play them on. That's why I labeled all of my, my tape players. I had them all lined up, and I lined them one, two, named them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then we recorded the same tape on each of the seven uh, recorders, uh, tape players, and then we listened to them and picked the two that were best to record them. And then we have the other ones just to listen to them um, and preview them. So um, my brother had a suggestion that we just record all of them and just hit play and walk away, and then you could just click play here and then click play here and play here and play here. But that's four hours of recording time or two hours of recording time. I would rather spend 15 minutes when I'm doing something else, walk away, listen to it at high speed. If it's, if it's one that has a lot of talking on it, you would have to maybe babysit it a little bit more, maybe when you're checking your email at night and just hit play and then fast forward and check your email and then hit you know play and that so that you can go through them very quickly. I don't know that there's a lot of people who have this issue or problem, but I figured I would blog about it and put it on my YouTube channel so that they could understand the best way that we've come up with to transfer them. So this is part A, and hopefully I will be able to get to part B soon, but I've got a lot going on um, with graduation. So I may not get to part B for a little while, but I just wanted to share with you that. 
If you have any questions, feel free to ask, but uh, this is the easiest way I've found so far. And also, I, like a couple of years ago, we recorded some and the tape players were horrible and they just made a, hi a high-pitched hiss or a low rumble um, throughout all the recordings and they aren't the best quality. So I suggest that before you spend time to transfer them over, if you're going to, see it would cost me $20,000 to transfer all of those. <laughs> over I'm sure and I don't want all of them I don't want this opera that doesn't mean anything to me but you know I have my mother speaking in a, a huge university that that's a great speech and I, I want to transfer that over so you want to if you're going to do the work you might as well have the best quality possible so I, those are my suggestions feel free to ask check out my blog thesecretisgratitude.com my YouTube channel I've got all sorts of things not just family history stuff it's the secret is gratitude on YouTube Thanks for watching and have a blessed day.